So we're gonna we're gonna test ourselves, and as you listen and, and watch along, uh, see if you qualify for the biblical worldview. And it, the thing I read from Focus on the Family a few minutes ago is basically they grab this. It's from George Barna. Barna Research Group is a pretty well known yeah. faith based uh, research group. And there are seven things that they ask people about for the biblical worldview. Um, all set. All right. This was on my phone, but my phone is now a camera. Here we go. Okay. Here are the seven things. Can I give context yeah. to the percentage of, remember the 65% or is that something in a, a later article? Okay. So Pew did research and asked, you know, many, many people, I mean, okay. thousands and thousands of people. Is, I don't know the Pew stuff. Go for okay. it. Okay. And, and they asked, you know, are you Muslim? Are you atheist, agnostic, Jewish? That like all the religions and Christian uh, came up 65%. of, And so it was kind of like, wow, 65% of the people around identify the as, around, being, as, as Christian. Wait, identify as Christian as or Christian, religious? As Christian. In America? In, in America. Uh, and that's a code for I believe in God. And um, Ish. the... Um, Arizona cultural Christianity, whatever that you're going to speak, I think about. Um, I think at Arizona Christian University, yes, I believe. They went and dug down deeper, um, and that was okay. Of these 65%, we're now going to go and ask them 35 to 40 questions on the biblical worldview and see, you know, are they really Christians? And it came back 6% actually kind of passed their their filter not, not that they were really christians but if they <laughs> had, a, had a biblical, biblical worldview. worldview they well they they said yes i am a christian and then they went okay we're now going to test you we're not i mean they're not saying that but they essentially their intent was to go and say do you have the biblical worldview and then they asked questions and of the 65 percent their intent was to judge them and their hearts well just to find out where they're at are you a Christian? Let me judge your heart. And that was based off beliefs and behaviors. So I'm going to read these seven and let's do this like a lightning round. We can go back and add more context, <laughs> okay. but just right. for poops and giggles, let's get to it. You're, it's going to drive you nuts because you're going to want to, well, I'm talking about myself. I'm going to want a caveat because that's what I do. Is this a yes or no thing? Yes. <laughs> no. Maybe. Yes, no. Or you could say generally yes or no. That's what he does. See, I just I just ruined it already. Oh, your mileage may vary. <laughs> so, according to this research, though, three percent of adults embrace all seven of these cornerstones for their life. Only three percent, which means ninety-seven percent do not embrace all seven, all seven of, of these of these cornerstones for a biblical world worldview. The majority, eighty percent, embrace at least one or more, while twenty percent reject all seven. Andy, are you worried? Like, what if we say no to all of them? Well, are we going to hell tonight. Then you're going to be on this couch. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, it depends. To how, half of them will be. It depends. Okay, go ahead. All right. One must possess an orthodox biblical understanding of God. What does yes. that mean? This is my answer to most of them. Me too. Okay. Jeff gave a yes. What does that mean? I'll say yes, maybe. Also, what does that mean? Number two, all human beings are sinful by nature and choices have moral considerations and consequences. Yes. 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 The consequences of sin can only be forgiven and eliminated through faith in Jesus Christ and forgiveness is available only by personal acknowledgement and confession and complete reliance on his grace. Yes. Yes. No. No. Number four, the entire Bible. I know you want it. You want to ask follow-up questions. You can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the entire Bible is true, reliable, and relevant, making it the best moral guide for every person in all situations. Yes. Say it one more time. The entire Bible is true, reliable, and relevant, making it the best moral guide for every person in all situations. What do you mean by True. Just give me a yes or no gut reaction. It depends. Okay. I say no. Absolute moral truth. This is number five. Absolute moral truth exists, and those truths are defined by God, described in the Bible, and are unchanging. 
Yes. Yes. Sometimes. The ultimate... Well, actually, yeah, and it depends. <laughs> yes, and it depends. Number six, the ultimate purpose of human life is to know, love, and serve God with all one's heart, mind, and strength. Yes. 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 Depends on things. Every single one of these depends on things. I know. And number seven, success on earth is best understood as consistent, obedient to God in thoughts, words, and action. Yes. Success on earth? Yes. Success on earth is best understood as consistent obedience to God in thoughts, words, and action. My definition of success, whose definition of success, I guess, is the question. God. So you, by based on your definition, which we're not going to unpack, would you say yes or no? Your definition of success. Yes, and. Uh, yeah. No and. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not only All that, right. but. <laughs> All right. So we got to it. So Hey, and l- listeners at home, hey, score it. Let us know. How'd you score? Hey, Jeff, were you, were you listening? Uh, Mr. Rogers, were you keeping track? Like where, how many were affirmative yeses for you? I'm just curious. Or I was sleeping for the last couple of months. Okay. Yeah. All Jeff right. was, Jeff Rogers was sleeping. <laughs> He's definitely That's fired. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is your li- <laughs> every listener's last, the last podcast. You do for less damage, Jeff. less damage sleeping. Yes. <laughs> I have the feeling that every producer we get in here, it's going to be their last. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> a, we'll edit that out, and B, this is their last, their last show. insert producer's <laughs> name, last show ever. So again, three percent embrace all seven. Three percent of Americans surveyed, and the majority, eighty percent, embrace one or more of those, which that I fall into there. So I don't know what their threshold would be, like. If you get four out of seven affirmative okay. yeses, you're a biblical worldview or what? So when you first sent this over, my reaction as I read through them all was they're trying to take a blend of things that could be taken as very black and white um, or could be very gray. And when they present them, when they present these things that have a lot of gray area in it and it and it comes without context and without definition and what some of these words mean, that's where I get hung up and I'm like, that's where my it depends comes from because i i don't know what you what you mean by that so maybe i believe what you, the way that you're describing this but maybe i don't out of all of the seven questions yes which stood out to you as the most gray what was the available one there's one that has the word available uh um, actually just read through them quickly i'll tell you the ones uh one must pos- possess an orthodox biblical understanding of god Yes, that's. Let's start from the top. Define what you mean by orthodox uh, description of God. So, a biblical understanding of God. This is where, like, a biblical worldview. This is where my quibbles start. It's like, just tell me what that means first. So, so the God in Jesus that most Christians believe Jesus is God and human. Um, like, are we talking First John? Calling calling people to love their neighbors. God is, be like God. God is perfect in that he loves his enemies and he blesses those that persecute them. Be that way. John 1.1. 1, 1. Is that the same? Is is that the same as the God that calls for the genocide and the murder? And then, hey, by the way, if they have virgins, you can keep those for yourselves. Like, is that the same? Or are we talk? If we would have done homework, we would have looked up what the typical definition of an orthodox view of God is. It's it may uh, the question is maybe like I don't know I've, if there's one, but a lot of Christians they they think the Bible speaks clearly about God's nature and is consistent throughout Scripture. But the two examples I just gave, at least in this humble podcaster's mind, those are not the same, um, I, unless God is the God that says, "Hey, do what I say, not what I do." Like love your love your enemies, pray you, for those who persecute you. But I'm not gonna. I'll, I'll do it for you that that repent and come to a proper understanding of me. Then I'll love you in a selfific way. But otherwise, you do that. But I'm gonna destroy my enemies if they don't come to repentance. Is God like Sharon Stone in Casino? Stay with me. One of my favorite scenes because it's hila- it's so darkly hilarious. She on a table like this, although it was probably like gla- it was probably glass. Her daughter's in the room. Her daughter's like eight, seven or eight, 
and she's doing lines of coke, looks up at her daughter and says, you should never do this. And so it's the perfect version of like, do what I say, not what I do. It's like, but you're kind of setting the example for her. Are you struggling with the age old question? Is there a different God of the Old Testament versus New Testament? Uh, no, because I, I separate it by, a, I think, humans understanding it's written from human perspectives, the anthropomorphizing of God. And so you see a progression on humans understanding with God, and it culminates in Christ on the cross, in my opinion. And so I don't believe God is a do, do as I say, not as I do. Oh. I believe God is do as I do. And I believe God loves his enemies and forgives and blesses the good and the bad, sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. But some aspects of God in the Old Testament are depicted otherwise. Humans are interpretations of God. Um, Yes. But that's where I'm at right now. And my, my current... Uh, my current definition of ra- God's wrath that I I'm feel good about is uh, God giving you over to the the consequences of your actions. I, that's the one that like yeah. mm-hmm. I remember Todd Redarmel, former pastor of Mountain View Church. T Rod, T Rod, Todd Rod, God Pod. Um, yeah, when he first introduced that concept, I was like, ah, oh, that that made me pause and it made me think about it, and I. I think I can get on board with that. Uh, at least I can get on board with it more than than anything else in light of a God who loves and and is love. The definition of God, who, uh, a God who is love. And I, I like that you framed it as my current my current definition. That's where I am today. Because as spi- in spite of how dogmatic I might have just sounded, I I I try to have that motif surrounding everything. Like right now, here's where I'm at because it's changed before, then it can change again. Um, I'm taking notes from uh, bro of the podcast slash mentor of the podcast, Art Greco. And I feel like that's w- w- what's the way that he phrases it. He's like, this is what I'm convinced of lately or something to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. Having strong convictions, but you're still open palm like, hey. It might change, but this is change. this is how this is making sense to me these days. So we didn't all the next, all human beings are sinful by nature. That's not con- controversial. The, the consequences of sin can only be forgiven, eliminated through faith in Jesus Christ. Forgiveness is available. Blah, blah, blah. The entire Bible is true, reliable, relevant, making it the best moral guide for every person in all situations. This one was hard for me. Why? Uh, the relevancy thing gets gets kind of tricky so i can i can do some like algebra here and and make some of these things relevant and and try to apply it to today but i think the problem that happens is when people do literal like a a translation of well for example if you if you took a lot of leviticus and try to say it's directly relevant for today it'd be weird like we would be living in in weird times. You'd be doing weird stuff. I you, promise. You wouldn't be wearing the shirt you're wearing because no. it's blended fabrics. Yeah, it's blended fabrics, and this is clearly a, a cotton poly blend. Obviously, how did you know? Oh, I know my blends. Your pants too. Take yeah. them both off. Yeah. <laughs> Remove your sinful clothing, Jeff. You better hope your underwear is pure cotton. Yeah. Pure like the driven snow. You, you guys, can't have cotton with that dirty, dirty polyester. You yeah. guys know way too much about my clothing. <laughs> clothing in general. <laughs> but uh, but that's, what, that's where I'm like, okay. The, the problem that I have with that is that it, it, like, it puts this stamp on all of biblical text that all biblical text is identical and it's the same. Now... The flip side argument to that that I wrestle with is there was there was a statement later on that was like the 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 word of God is unchanging. There's also a statement that I've heard a lot, which is the word of God is dynamic, and the dynamic part, the way that I interpret that idea, is that yes, this was written two thousand plus years ago. However, 
because God is who he is and can inspire the things that he can inspire in humans, it means that that what was written then can have applications um, universally and throughout time. That feels like something that, that is within God's power to do. I like that. But what that does is the way this is worded is is to be super clear, black and white, and what your definition did, which I I'm okay with in spite of like all my my flaws and not being a very good Christian. It's I'm okay with that because there is there is a little bit of wiggle room. Hey, let's understand this. Let's dig into this text and see what it means, as opposed to like, no, it says it right there. That's equal equally applicable to your life as it is for their lives back then. And what does it mean now? Like that's that's the dynamic part for me, which is a trip. Is like it meant that then for them at that time. That's where you get caught up. No, actually, it's it's encouraging to me because I look at it and I go, okay, so then what does it mean for us now mm-hmm. in our context? In our context, and that's the dynamic part of of scripture for me. That's uh, mystical. It's 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 actually like. <laughs> slash magical supernatural that that god can say this can mean what it needs maybe this is the right way to put it this can mean what it needs to mean for for my people throughout time and it might change Mm -hmm. yes depending on their their context at this time it, it means this for you and and i think that that it's probably one of those things like if you blur your vision or if you zoom out a little bit like the general direct it's all pointed in the same direction Mm -hmm. so i'm not implying that god god like changes drastically the the ultimate outcomes or the his intentions for people or anything like that or, or his nature even but i'm saying that like this people needed this to mean this to them in this time so that it could point them in this direction these people needed it at this time in this way, so it could also point them in this direction. Uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, listener, I'm pointing each time in the in, same direction. In directions. Yes. Yeah, in the same direction. 